Hey there, Night Owl here. Hope you're all doing well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I hope everybody's doing well. Um, today we are going to continue reading the Share Jesus Without Fear book. Um, like I said, you know, this kind of subject is not for everybody, but hey, give it a listen. You never know, you might get something out of it. So uh, where I left you off before last time was the Y principle. So I'm going to continue with that and uh, we'll go from there. So whenever I get to a no qu to question five, I ask why the following chapter will again discuss the why principle as well as other ways to handle objections you might hear when you ask questions and question five. Are you ready to invite Jesus into your life and into your heart and receive a no? Embrace the unexpected. So that's kind of a given right there in the title. Embrace the unexpected. Because you will get unexpected answers sometimes from people, I guess you could say. You know, um, it says, we mean well. We mean to stop and reach out to others. But we get caught up in life. We stumble over the very blessings God has given us. The blessings of family, hobbies, our job and our church send us into a mad rush to the fast lane. We get so out of touch, we fail to notice when the Holy Spirit authors the unexpected. Jesus is unimpressed when we do not take time to follow his leading. We need to pay attention to those people he has put in our path. But don't under, but you don't understand, you may say, or... I'm so behind, I don't have time to invest my life in sharing the gospel with anyone. I would argue that when it comes to God's work, you don't have interruptions. You have only divine opportunities. You don't need to worry about maintaining your fast pace when God gives you the unexpected. He gives you all the time you need. Besides, sharing your faith does not have to be a long-winded affair. Did you know it is poss possible to share your faith in 30 seconds or less? Um, yeah, it is possible. <laughs> I know it seems kind of unbelievable and unexpected, you know, but it is possible. You can do it by simply asking the last five uh, commitment questions. I practiced this several times years ago. Late one night, I was driving down a dark road, and as I rounded the corner, I saw several squad cars with their dome lights on, blinking. Then, I saw a small Volkswagen Beetle crushed against a tree. I could see the hydraulics of the jaws of life that had just been used to pull a 19-year-old boy out of the mangled car. He lay on a stretcher with IVs jammed into his arms as the paramedics tried to save his young life. I pulled over, got out of my car, and made my way to the boy. But I had a problem. A helicopter crew was ready to whisk the boy up to the hospital. I had only 30 seconds to share the gospel of Christ. This was complicated, but the fact that this boy could not speak, all he could do was groan. I knelt by his head and whispered, Are you a sinner? Uh. Do you want forgiveness? Uh. Do you believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and rose again? Uh, are you willing to surrender your life to Jesus Christ? Uh, that was all he could say. He can only grunt. Are you ready to invite Jesus into your life and into your heart? You see, if this groan came from the boy's heart, he was saved. The gospel is so simple. It only takes a few seconds to share. And the next day, I read in the paper that the boy had died. Yet I know one thing. God loved him enough to give him an opportunity to la the last moment to receive his son, Jesus Christ. If that boy did, he was walking the streets of gold saying, man, that was close. But that's not the end of the story. Seven years later, I conducted a seminar in a small church and told this story. Afterward, a grandmotherly woman approached me. She touched her throat as she softly asked, was it a green Volkswagen Beetle? Nobody knew that, that but the Lord and me. I said, yes, ma'am, how did you know? With tears in her eyes, she whispered, that was my grandson. 
God loved her enough to let her know that her grandson had one more opportunity to come to him. So, when you look back at this story, was the car accident an interruption to my life or a God-given opportunity? Perhaps this will help you to look at your own interruptions in a new light. So, I mean, this is the thing. Like, opportunities to present yourself. You're sitting at a bus stop waiting to get to work. Somebody's sitting there all by themselves. Why not? Sitting on a bus. Sitting beside someone. You got a half hour bus ride. Perfect opportunity, right? Like, just little things that we would take by as time to reflect on our own life. Is time to share. Keith Andrews is a man who also who allows life's interruptions to be used by God's opportunities. At 4.30 in the morning, I stood up in Denny's restaurant and taught him and a bunch of other UPS drivers how to share their faith. Keita called me a week later to tell me about all the people he had led to Christ. He was almost flying. He could hardly catch a breath as he told me the story about how he had led people to the Lord in parks, stores, everywhere. We met, I, f I fell completely in love with him, and we became close friends. One day, Keita's life was interrupted. As he jumped out of his UPS truck, he, his knee collapsed under him. Later, after major surgery, he called me and asked, Do you know any ministry that pays to share your faith? I laughed. If I knew it, I would be in it myself, Keita. That way... My wife came home from her job as a nurse in the inner city health clinic. She mentioned the clinic was looking for a chaplain. I immediately called the board of directors and told them about Kita. He got the job. So at that time, the clinic saw more than 15,000 people a year. Many of those patients came through Kita's office and heard his questions and read the scriptures. We have lost count of the number of people who have come to Jesus, which is amazing. See, and just that as a chaplain in a clinic, you know, opportunity right there. One day after my wife finished her job at the clinic, she started to walk to her car. A man ran behind her and grabbed her purse. Her first reaction was shock, but her second reaction was to cha charge. So, here's my 50-plus-year-old wife running down the street chasing a crack dealer. The mugger ran into a crack house, and my wife pounded on the door and shouted, If you don't give me my purse, I'm going to put Bill and Keita on you. Later, when she told me the story, I called Keita. He knew the mugger. So, we went and sat outside his house. A man in a wheelchair showed up. Akita led him to Christ, and then the man who stole my wife's purse showed up. Akita led him to Christ. A few days later, the mugger apologized to my wife and returned her purse. Only the money was missing. Not that I recommend chasing crack dealers down the street, and I don't recommend it either. Please don't do that, if you know. But I do recommend you pay close attention to all the interruptions that come into your life. Give each of them to God and allow him to reach through you with his love and power. And when you do, you will see God use all things for his good, even bum knees and stolen purses. Now, be thankful. Remember as you watch for opportunity, God wants to be, simply be thankful. The Holy Spirit wants to use your faithfulness to bless you to people, the person you are sharing with, as well as yourself. He wants you to experience the joy of Philemon verse 6. I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith so that you will have a full understanding of every good thing we have in Christ. Coach Dave Nichols said, The summer I began to share my faith with the graduating seniors, I experienced that kind of joy in my heart. My relationship with Christ grew I was more excited than when I saw the Broncos win the Super Bowl. The Holy Spirit wants you to experience this joy. You will have a full understanding of what you have in Christ. 
Through this process, you may be amazed at how God will use you. And he may even further your faith in him as you go through this process with other people and person after person. Coach Dave adds, plug into where God is moving. Take advantage of every opportunity. One night, the phone rang. A phone solicitor from New Mexico was trying to sell me something, and I listened to his pitch and told him, I'm not interested. As he tried to pitch it a second time, I said, I have a question for you. Do you have any kind of spiritual belief? That's when I learned something. God is moving, not just in Windsor, Colorado, but all over the world. I was elated when the salesman gave his heart to Christ. The ve Test every opportunity that comes your way. When you find God is moving, join him. And like da Coach Dave, you will be thankful that your joy is complete. So I'm going to leave it there for this week. And we'll get to the review. Or actually, you know what? I'm going to do the review. Commitment questions. So here's your five questions. Are you a sinner? Do you want forgiveness of sins? Do you believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and rose again? Are you willing to surrender your life to Jesus Christ? And are you ready to invite Jesus Christ into your life and into your heart? After you ask these questions, remember, be silent and pray after each question. If your friend says yes to question five, you may want to lead him through the following prayer. And here's the prayer that he suggests. And it's simple. And it's quick. Heavenly Father, I have sinned against you. I want forgiveness for all my sins. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me and rose again. Father, I give you my life to do with as you wish. I want Jesus Christ to come into my life and into my heart. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So remember, you may want to write down the, these questions as well as this prayer in your Bible. And the next chapter will show you how to support the person who has said yes to Jesus. So in the next video, we'll be doing chapter 7. And that's going to be called, called What to Do When Someone Receives Christ. So not only is this about sharing yourself, but this is about what to do once they say yes as well. So thank you so much for joining me for this video. God bless. Take care. Bye.